Okay, I think we'll get started. So welcome to our lab course on the PIC 12 uh, 675. This is a, uh, again, a very simple microcontroller, but one that's a little more sophisticated than the PIC 10F200 if you have taken that course already. So um, just to get started, my name is Darren Olness. I'm a member of the chemistry department uh, for the past 25 years. I teach physical chemistry, I teach in the neuroscience program, and I also teach physics in the physics department there at Concordia College uh, here in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, the website you're, or the YouTube channel you're watching uh, is something I call the GNL project, and it's based on uh, a quote by G.N. Lewis that goes something to the effect, physical chemistry is everything that's interesting. And this has been something that has really guided my life in science. Uh, I take this to mean that uh, trying to understand nature at the very fundamental level, as physical chemists do, give you, gives you the freedom to study uh, anything that you find interesting. So it's a very liberating concept. And so one of the areas that I've gotten very interested in lately is trying to really trying to understand how computers and microcontrollers work all the way from the chemistry that makes up the, uh, the chemistry and material science that make up the various uh, pieces of uh, say the MOSFET transistors and so on, all the way up to um, the microcontrollers, computers, uh, coding, um, AI, uh, and so uh, that's um, something that's been uh, that I've been working on um, lately, and uh, use some of these in the lab to do our um, data. I actually um, am interested in light matter interactions, so I'm a laser spectroscopist. But as you might imagine, there's a lot of interfacing with equipment and talking to the computer and trying to get things uh, coordinated, and so it's always something that I felt a little bit um, self-conscious about in terms of my ability to do that. So I've been trying to work on that from the ground up. And so this series, along with some others uh, on the PIC uh, microcontrollers, I find very interesting because we get right down to coding those uh, at the with assembly language. So you're just not that far away from the ones and zeros of the machine language. They're very simple microcontrollers, uh, although they can get pretty sophisticated. And we'll work our way up through <coughs> different versions of the PIC microcontroller uh, as we go. <coughs> but they're, you're, you're able to get your head around it at least. Uh, and I think that's a, a nice place to start to get really grounded in, in how computers work. Now for this particular lab sequence, uh, there are eight videos in the um, in the uh, uh, playlist. Uh, if you are taking this through Concordia College, uh, there will also be, uh, for this particular set, your own project that you will work on at the end after you've completed these videos. But if you're just out there uh, on, on the internet, which I, um, which I hope you're tuned in as well, uh, uh, these are the eight videos that we have and hopefully they will help you get going. Now, uh, here, even more so than the previous um, set, we're going to try to stay very, very simple with any kind of circuitry or chemistry uh, and focus right in on either the assembly language that's needed or the PIC microcontroller itself. So we won't always have the best or optimal elect electrical circuit. For example, we won't be using capacitors to reduce high frequency noise and so on, uh, but we're just trying to get the gist of what's going on with uh, each of the components of this microcontroller. Now, I've been mentioning a couple of times this PIC 10F200, which is the simplest microcontroller in the PIC series, and we have a full course on that. And I would consider this kind of a soft prerequisite. If you're brand new to PIC microcontrollers, uh, I would start back with this sequence. Uh, so it's, the, it's one of the other playlists in this, and I'll have a link in the description here. Uh, so I would definitely start here, but if you have some familiarity with PIC microcontrollers, that isn't necessary to do that. We don't build upon, we don't really build upon that here. There are some things that we've programmed here that we just take for granted here, uh, but I do try to explain most things as we go through uh, each of these labs. So if you feel good about that, then you can start directly with the um, PIC 12F675. 
And we're going to focus on some of the things that this does not have. So that's perhaps another reason to look at this is we've done some things here um, with the assembly programming and, and some of the arithmetic that goes on there that we just won't do here. Uh, now we'll start with an overview of the data sheet. And here I encourage you to, to actually either print out a copy if you like to have a paper copy uh, or um, to, uh, to have one in a PDF that you can access really easily and follow along as we go as we use it because we're going to try to refer to it through here. It's really important to start to get to be able to learn how to read these data sheets. They're they can be pretty intimidating and they're sometimes a little bit cryptic so it is sometimes difficult to um, to really understand but it's but it is important to start to get what you can out of the data sheets and I've noticed now that I've been working on this for a little while that it gets easier and easier to pull what you need to out of those data sheets so what I would encourage you to do here is just watch this first video maybe on double speed uh, have the have the printout with you just sort of follow along so that you know where things are and where to find them I'll be saying a few things about here that might be technical and you know if that goes over your head the first time don't worry at all you don't have to get stalled out at at this level now the first actual lab which we'll call the zeroth lab here uh, as always the hello world programming uh, program equivalent for microcontrollers is to try to get an LED to blink and um, that's uh, I've been working on several uh, pick microcontrollers and I that's the first thing I always try to do is can I make sure that I can get the digital auto uh, input outputs to work by blinking a uh, an LED so that way I know you're you know you're talking you're able to talk to the microcontroller you're able to uh, it's, it's programming correctly and everything is working okay and actually here you can um, you can pick up some places where the you can't get quite information from the data sheet so there's there's it is important to, to be able to do this now we get into the real differences between this and the pic 10 f200 uh, and that is uh, the comparators the digital to analog conversion and the interrupts so uh, lab one will be on using the comparator and so a comparator simply compares uh, two voltages and uh, then gives an output based on uh, on that and yes of course you could use a less sophisticated uh, chip um, such as a, just an op amp circuit or even just a transistor circuit to make a comparator but uh, it's so handy to be able to do that with the micro with the microcontrollers that they're built into almost all of the other PIC uh, controllers beyond these very very simple ones. Then as a scientist uh, talking to the outside world the outside world is often analog so maybe you have a thermometer that's giving you a voltage uh, proportional to its temperature that you have to monitor some equipment with light levels uh, whatever uh, often in the most simplest form those are just giving out analog signals and so uh, we're going to have three labs here on using the analog to digital conversion that uh, is capable of this PIC 12F 675 this also has interrupts. Uh, we won't spend a, too much time on that, but it is important to do to look at that, uh, and that will be uh, the fifth lab here. And so this is where uh, the pro program could be microcontroller could be doing something. It doesn't have to continuously monitor what's going on over here. If something happens over here, then it will interrupt the program and deal with that, and then come back. And so. Uh, we'll do a very simple demonstration of that where uh, when you press a button it will interrupt a blinking LED for a set period of time and then it'll go back to uh, blinking the LED. Then finally uh, the last one is a bit of an application it's a pretty simplistic one uh, but we're gonna make a salinity tester application uh, so we'll make a little probe that we can put into saltwater solutions and if the salinity is high then the light will the LED will turn on and if it's low then the LED will turn off and so this would be an example of some sort of really basic tester to see if 
water's too salty for some kind of uh, maybe fish environment or um, to drink. Uh, so just a very basic, simple example there. All right, so that is the uh, series. I really hope you can engage in this and enjoy uh, the series. Oh, I, sorry, I guess I get one more thing. The materials, the PIX 12F275, uh, pretty cheap. Uh, not quite as cheap as this, but $1.50. Now, I, I've i bricked uh, four or five of these, uh, and it can, for some reason, for some PIX microcontrollers, I'm not going to sure why and I haven't been able to find a lot of good information on the on the internet about that um, when you're trying to program it'll just uh, program the wrong spot and then the the picks become unresponsive so I would encourage you uh, and they tend to they can be a little sensitive to static so I would encourage you to buy several of these um, maybe 10 or something like that uh, to make sure that if you blow one you're not just stuck uh, and um, hopefully you won't have that happen to you, but it's it, in, for this particular PIC microcontroller, uh, this one it never did, but this one uh, it, it did for me. So like to have some spares on hand. The big cost item is the PIC Kit 5. Uh, I think you can, you know, you could use a PIC Kit 4, I know that. Um, I'm not sure if the current version of MP Lab will allow for a PIC Kit 3, um, but if so, you can maybe find some of those on eBay a little bit cheaper. Uh, although I would, all I, I'm always doing everything with the PIC Kit 5. And then very minimal electronics, as we said, just a breadboard, a couple of resistors, LED, and a push button, but you wouldn't even really need the push button. You could just um, push two wires together. And so I'd say something less than 20 bucks for, for that. So. Uh, there's that. If you are at Concordia and you uh, want to do this and you want to borrow some of this, uh, just come by and see me and uh, we can, um, the, the department can uh, put together a little uh, lab packet for you. All right, so uh, that's the series. And uh, I hope you, as I said earlier, I hope you can engage in this and really uh, get a lot out of this and enjoy starting to learn about these um, PIC microcontrollers. Really cool to be able to control them at a very basic level.